Now I want to take a minute and pay tribute to the bravest woman I know, Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa Price, who has again come under fire for being a strong principled woman, for refusing to back down in the face of ugly intimidation and straight out abuse. The Yes advocates seem to have a taste for targeting women and there's no bigger target for them than Senator Price. By now, you would have seen the latest attack with crazy claims that this black woman hates her own people, hates her own mother, presumably, hates her own children and community. But I'm going to show you just how complicit the ABC was in this deranged attack. Now, Jacinda Price is a warrior and she's for a long time now withstood the most dreadful vitriol and threats threats that you would not believe, all because she stands up for her principles and fights for what's right. Sadly for Jacinta, what's right is not always popular with the media or the activist class who too often set the narrative in this country. Now for years she has endured these ugly attacks, often racial and sexual in nature, and why? Because she speaks up about the deplorable rates of domestic violence and child sexual abuse in Indigenous communities. She has been targeted by the powerful to the pitiful, from prominent Indigenous men to random online trolls. If she had railed against Australia Day and the flag and pushed divisive race-based policies, well, she'd be celebrated as a heroine. But Jacinta has the temerity to speak about what she has seen and experienced. Consequential issues that can't be readily blamed on colonisation or white privilege. This week we saw Marcus Stewart, a Yes campaigner who has served as co-chair of the First Peoples Assembly of Victoria. He was given a platform on the National Broadcaster to throw demented abuse at Senator Price, accusing her of spreading lies and misinformation and then we heard this. And we have a far right politician in Senator Napanjipa Price out there spreading lies, spreading mist and disinformation. I don't think I've come across anyone that hates Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander or seems to hate Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people so much. Here was a man accusing a black woman, a survivor of domestic violence, who has devoted her life to helping the most disadvantaged in her community of hating her own people. Now, that comment went unchecked. The ABC host, Greg Jennett, did not question that outrageous statement. Indeed, he sought to justify it by suggesting why Stuart would make such a claim. Most recently, she has uh, delivered some quotes in relation to welcome to country ceremonies in this country. I think she's suggested uh, there's no problem acknowledging our history, but she says, rolling out these performances before every sporting event and public gathering is definitely divisive, she told the Australian newspaper. Is, is that what you're referring to? Is that what you were referring to? So Jacinta Price questioning the usefulness of divisive and often incoherent acknowledgement and welcome to country ceremonies statements warrants an unhinged reaction like the one we just saw. Accusations of racial hatred, accusations of self-hatred. Here's a newsflash for the race obsessed. Many Australians from all sorts of backgrounds detest being incessantly welcomed to their own country. It's precisely the type of performative racial privilege that achieves nothing other than dividing us along racial lines, divides us into owners and interlopers. And if you ask me, no Australian should be treated like an interloper on their own land. But this abuse Jacinta is copying is nothing new. For many years now, long before the voice debate, long before she became a senator, Price has endured terrible verbal attacks and threats of violence. Price has been punished for revealing the cultural issues that contribute to Indigenous women being 35 times more likely to be hospitalised due to domestic violence than other Australian women. The intensity of these attacks picked up in 2016 after she shared insights into the culture of silence that demands victims protect their abuses or face the retribution, well, not just from their aggressor, but the extended family. Price explained the dangerous cycle of violence. 
I could spend days giving examples of acts of family violence that I have witnessed or come to learn within my own family in remote communities, where I am related to both the victim and the perpetrator, and where the kinship network demands loyalty to your family members even if they are perpetrators. One is expected to pretend that these perpetrators are decent human beings and ignore the fact that they have committed acts of physical and sexual violence against those you love. Because to speak out, to speak the truth, is to create conflict. So from early in life, everyone learns to lie to keep the peace. Which manifests into child and youth suicide and the continuation of a destructive cycle. Back in 2018, I wrote about some of the abuse Jacinda Price was copying and the lack of support from the sisterhood who normally spark into action at the first hint of gendered abuse. Back then, it was the likes of Bill Nicholson from the Wurundjeri Tribe Land and Compensation Cultural Heritage Council who was treating Price to treatment like this. Let's have a look at what something he posted. He said, how about you effing die a painful death, you sell out coconut, uh, it's a racial stir. Your type of real cancer in our communities and need to be eradicated like the disease you are, charming stuff. But it got worse than that. There were many other threats of physical and sexual violence that people felt emboldened enough to post on social media. In the face of such ugliness, Price has somehow maintained a quiet but fierce dignity. She won't be bullied into silence. She won't be intimidated into inaction. She is her mother's daughter, the fearless best Price, who was promised to an older man as a second wife when she was just 13 years old. She escaped that fate to become an advocate for the genuinely disadvantaged and served in the NT Legislative Assembly. We've watched Senator Price excel as shadow Indigenous Australians minister after replacing the feckless Julian Lisa. Australia is lucky to have a woman of her calibre in the Australian Parliament. And what we need to see now is an apology, a fulsome apology from the ABC for airing unchallenged that latest abuse of Jacinda Price.